Hi, welcome to the Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is the always fun to have on, uh, my good friend, Ricardo Alvarez. Ricardo, thanks for coming on again. You're great. Um, no problem. Thank you for having me here again. My pleasure. Are you, uh, can I talk about the new thing you're doing or is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the new thing? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Right. So Ricardo is a uh, long time, like 20 year program manager at NASA Ames Research Center in California, but uh, is just about to start uh, at Google. So uh, congratulations on that, buddy. Thank That's you. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, yeah, welcome back. Thank also, you. Uh, another thing that Ricardo is, and sorry to cut you off and <laughs> put words in your mouth. And, uh, you know, obviously, um, let me if I'm wrong on this, but immigrant from El Salvador, um, who's accomplished quite a bit in this country. Um, and so today, uh, we figured we'd talk about that, although in true CWSK style, we'll probably go all over the map. So thanks again for coming <laughs> on, bud. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah, uh, so I am an immigrant. Um, let's see, where do we start with this? Um, okay, born in El Salvador, um, that's in Central America. Um, I lived there till about two years old or so. Um, cool. Try not to not to say what year it was. I'm sure yeah. you remember none of it. I feel like you don't switch around <laughs> yeah. to your sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, this was during the uh, the Civil War, actually. Oh um, wow! Okay. Yeah. So, so I was born, and then the Civil War gets started, <clears throat> um, and you know. My dad at that time he was he was working for a beer company. He was doing accounting for them, so you know he he, he always had the, the good beer. <laughs> That's the job know? of my people. <laughs> yeah, the job of my people. I'm Jewish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he always had the good beer. Uh, it's called uh, Pilsner. Nice. Pilsner is, is yeah. Uh, um, any particular Pilsner or just Pilsner? Because. That's the, that's actually the name of, of nice. the right, beer. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's a, it's it's like the, it's like the Salvadorian beer essentially. You know. That's awesome. Um, yeah, you know. So he was working at at that place, um, and I was around one or two years old. Um, the war gets started, uh, and you know, of course, this is all a little bit from memory in terms of like. What I remember in terms of you know smells, and oh, wow. vaguely what I remember, yeah, it was mostly smells that I, I, you know, it's it's always amazed me how, um, you know, and I've seen in science books how smell, you know, is a good scent to like remind you of things, right? You know, Interesting. And, and so like sure you said, the aromatherapy can put you right back in a certain spot. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's exactly what. Yeah. That's mostly what I remember. Um, I vaguely remember some you know, things having to do out there, right? Um, uh, but a lot of this is going to be more of a conversation of what my parents have told me as as well, right? So um, at I least in the beginning, anything from being two. Yeah, at, yeah, at the beginning. So um, although you know, so again, the the civil war is is raging out there. Um, I do remember, believe it or not, um, having to duck down underneath my bed. Fuck me. Um, yeah, so I was taught to do that. Um, Makes you know, sense. It's, it's just uh, you hear gun gunshots, and you know I knew that it's time to go underneath your bed. Probably um, survival goes up. Yeah, yeah. So that to me was uh, just a normal thing, you know. Uh, and that I do Makes remember. Sense. It's it's one of those weird things. Um, maybe because of the, I don't know, maybe the, the smell of the floor or something like that, you know. Um, but but there's certain smells that could bring me to that moment where I, I remember having to do that. Um, so, so we're out there uh, two years is, is what I lived out there. Um, and then, you know, essentially the, the neighbors start getting killed off. You know, it's one of oh those things God. where, yeah, the neighbors on the left, on the right, uh, you know, the front neighbors, the whole family. All of them, off. like every adjacent cell. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So that um, sounds cold. But yeah, I'm an engineer, yeah. so what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know, their whole family taken out. It's not like it's you know, up. just individuals like parents, 
mothers, kids, grandkids, you know, just everybody that was there out. Done. Jesus, man, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, and so that starts happening. And then, you know, when I was out there, I used to go and purchase sweet bread from this one lady. She was about three blocks, no, excuse me, three houses down. Um, and, you know, pretty safe, right? So I used to go out there at two years old. You would think. Say. Yeah. Um, she, uh, what happened was, uh, I think they, they thought that her, some family member of hers was kind of in the government or so. Um, see, it, she essentially, she got robbed um, and uh, attacked, right? Um, and the, it, it wasn't to steal anything, really. It was just to kind of, you know, put fear in her, right? Makes sense. And um, probably the you know, family they, members as well, like by proxy. Yeah, yeah. So she was, you know, from what I remember parents telling me, she was, you know, she was beat up. Um, you know, and, and, you know, so, yeah, I don't, I won't go into any more graphic detail than that, but, you know, she was, she was hurt, right? And she survived. Um, but nonetheless, that was another indicator that things were just getting worse. Um, and that, you know, um, we could be next, right? Yeah. That um, sounds right to me. So the next thing that happens is my dad finds out that he is some, on some kind of a, a list. Holy kind of like a, I guess like a hit list or so something like that, you know. Um, Can I ask how we time, found out? Or um, I'm not sure. You know, that's okay. that's a good question. That's something that I I've never asked. It, I know it was him and my my uncle were on it. Holy. Um, Holy. I know that at at that time he was working at that um, company. He was also going to college, right? So, you know, during the Civil War. Call, if you went to college and got educated, that was you considered an enemy of the state, right? You know, because you're diverting um, resources away from just the war effort, or it's it's more than anything because you are opening up your mind. Okay, right? so you it's know? kind of like Cambodia it's more, a little bit in that way. Yeah, yeah, pretty okay. much, yeah. So, uh, so with you know, so he's out, he's doing, he's working and going to college, um, and when he's and when he was coming back, because he would take the bus. Uh, the uh, the bus got stopped by the uh, military, and um, immediately he you know he was carrying some books or two books is what he had. One was on politics. Oh right? no! It's just a regular college class, right? You know, um, so right away he knows like you know, I, you know he, somehow you stash this or, or you're gone, like you know, or or you know, something bad's gonna happen, right? So he. Uh, Military stops him. He gets down, and he, you know he's holding the books. And he, and he, the soldier basically immediately tells them that everybody on the ground, you know, and he's gonna ask him questions or whatever. So he throws himself on the ground, and he just his book is just right up against his chest, right. And so oh shit, he's covering it like that. And and you know he was telling me he says uh, I feel the corners going into my rib cage, you know, but there was no way in hell that I was going to move, and you know and and let him know that something was there you know squish that down as um, far as you can and don't say a fucking word yeah yeah so Jesus. they're all on the ground there and um soldiers just kind of picks people to you know pat them down and see you know if there's anything going on uh luckily he skips him right wow um and then you know he says get back on the bus you know so that that event also basically um it it, it basically solidifies the idea that my dad had that we need to get out of here, right? We, we need to get out of this country um, and head over to the United States, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's where he wanted to come to visit at one time, but now it's, he sees it as a, you know, essentially like many immigrants, right? Like as a beacon of like, that's where you're going to prosper, right? Yeah. And that's um, my great grandparents when they came here from Russia, right? It's better life. Yeah. Right. Right. And so, uh, so with that, um, you know, he begins making plans of how we're going to leave the country. You can't, you know, during those times, you can't leave the country and say, you know, buy me a ticket and, and go straight to the United States, you know, because you don't want to, um, especially if you're on the list, you don't want to learn oh, anybody yeah. that oh, you yeah. tell anybody, right? Um, so at that point, he begins kind of developing the, the plan of how we're going to leave um, along with my mom. and. Um, 
you know, one of the things that he comes up with is the idea that he is going to, we are going to fly to Mexico as tourists. Oh, nice. <laughs> and from Mexico, <laughs> and from Mexico, then right there, that's where like the real deal Wait, would begin, right? So you could, you could fly as a tourist during the Civil War, but you just couldn't do so as an open like emigrant. Right, right. Okay, that's right. interesting. Well, yeah. So, so the idea was, you know, and so he, you know, so now he's got to make this look real, right? Like it's, you know, so yeah. he goes out and buys a camera nice. that was very expensive. <laughs> 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 he says that was a lot of money to spend on that camera, but I saw it as an investment. Yeah. As a disguise that that I was going to have to get out of there, right? Got to be plausible. And yeah, so we all dress up. You know, he gets a nice, nice, some nice luggage, you know, which he didn't have at that time because it just, you know, he didn't really go on vacation anywhere. Right. So, um, and so he spends all this money, gets us all ready to go. And, um, you know, we're now looking like tourists, you know, and, and I've got a, I don't have the picture here with me, but, um, if you send it, we can edit it in later. If you want to get splice it. Yeah. If I can find it. Yeah. 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 Um, awesome. and yeah. And so, um, you know, now we're gonna fly out of there as tourists, right? But nonetheless, at that point, he can't tell anybody that we're leaving. So he doesn't tell his mother. He doesn't tell um, family members, and it's just we kind of leave in the evening. And you know, the only people that know that we left are the people that are taking us to the airport. <clears throat> and so we head out, uh, get to Did the you airport. Tell them, or they just thought you they were taking tourists to the airport for? No, this was, uh, it was one of his friends, I think, okay. who took him, so that, that knew, you know, but that was like the only person like that, that knew that, you know, it was, it was his friend and it had to be a friend that had a car. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the two requirements and you can't say anything, right? You know, yeah. um, cause we didn't have a car over there. So, you Makes know, it's sense. one of those things, right? Um, so we leave, uh, you know, get on the plane and we fly over to Mexico as tourists. Um, we arrive at um, uh, at the capital, Mexico is the capital, right? The uh, Distrito Federal, <clears throat> and um, we spend about two to three weeks out there at a um, at a hotel that. And, and let me just backtrack a little bit. So we arrive there at the airport with no knowledge and you know, at this time you don't have a phone you don't have gps you don't have lift or any of that right so uh we arrive at the airport i it was somewhere around midnight um, yeah and he says you know we he gets off the plane we get our luggage and we're at the door and it's like you know where do we go right like he's he's got some money you know to stay at a place but um but you didn't even so have a hotel happened. booking so you had to figure that out when you no. got there yeah yeah wow. it was all kind of by the seat of your pants <laughs> you know what i mean the fact that he was able to finance this in that situation is very lucky I mean, <laughs> yeah yeah you, you know yeah. and he used he was I, I mean he wasn't rich but you know we were well off over yeah. there in el salvador we it was it was a comfortable life you know um and so uh so we arrive and we get there and it's midnight and you know he He's got these because you know he, my sister's with us as well, right? So she's a year old. So he's got two kids, his wife, and <clears throat> we're now in Mexico. And um, this taxi just shows up, and you know, and my dad was like, "This is a fifty-fifty chance that he takes us somewhere where we might end up dead, or we might go to a like you know a nice hotel or or something." You know, <laughs> that's quite a dichotomy. Yeah, so he says, you know, the guy stops and he says, hey, you know, uh, what's a good hotel to go to, you know? And uh, the guy says, oh, I've got a good one for you. So, you know, um, you know, it'll be good for you and the kids, you know, it's downtown, you know. And takes us to the hotel. And, you know, my dad says, you know, the whole way I had no idea if this guy was going to rob us or or what you know um i'm trying not to show my accent from central america he says you know but you know that's it's hard right um so we you know so he ends up taking us to a hotel uh it was actually pretty nice according to my dad you know, cool. um don't ask me the name because i can't remember i'm <laughs> trying to think here yeah 
can't remember the name. Oh, good. If it comes up, we'll edit it in. If not, it's all good. Yeah. So we end up spending about two and a half weeks, almost three weeks out there. Um, you know, he, you know, my mom says you re he really took on the idea that he was a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's committal for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he says, you know, hey, you know, I'm in Mexico. Why not? You know, I mean, you yeah, know, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen there. next. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Might as well enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. So it's at this point that he begins to make the contact with who's going to bring us across the border, right? Because um, this is where, like, the, you know, the, the so-called vacation really ends. And then this is where the hard part is going to begin, right? Um, he had left with with a contact already from El Salvador, but the arrangements weren't final. Um, and then, so through that process, he, you know, we, he made contact with a, he's now a really good friend of the family, but he was, a, you know, what you would call a coyote, you know? Um, and that was, that was that guy's what, what job. What is that? Just a, a coyote. So, so the, in Spanish, we say coyote, coyote, right? And, and, and this is the guy that, or, lady you know it doesn't have to be a, a, a guy human. <laughs> yeah a human yeah <laughs> um that essentially uh will i hate the word smuggle but brings you into <laughs> the u.s you know? <laughs> fair enough i mean it is what it is like you know yeah it I sounds like it had to be done smuggled. and if there's a person that specializes in it you know mm -hmm. probably a higher probability of success yeah yeah so um so this guy, he, you know, he knows the ins and, ins and outs of uh, how to get people from Mexico out to the U.S. Um, and he's got like a, what you would call a little mini network of, you know, and people that work with him. your dad met this guy through a contact in El Salvador or like once he right, met, okay, right. wow. Yeah. And, and it turns out, later it turns out that this, um, the contact that he made he wasn't sure who this person was, right? They just knew that he had a reputation for bringing people over here, and you know it was it was not you know it was a good person, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it sounds like the reference there is probably as good as gold. I right. mean, it's a really right. critical. It could go poorly, yeah. like more so than the cab for sure. Yeah, yeah. Later on, um, in the story, I'll, I'll tell you, and it's it's a little it was a, a surprise to him and and you know to me to the family too, but. Um, and so <clears throat> now we're in, 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 uh, the capital of, the, of Mexico, right? And we need to get to, uh, Mexicali, um, basically the border, right? Closer to the border. Um, it's at that point that, you know, he begins, um, and, and I don't know how he did this, just basically asking people at the hotel <clears throat> of how to get from, from there to Mexicali. Uh, you know, he basically buys tickets on the bus, wow. and we begin our our travel to Mexicali. And that was, um, you know, to be truthful, I don't know how many hours or days actually. I think it was. I would I think, think the days. fact that you stayed for two weeks probably helped with the success of that because, like, two reasons. One would be that it probably helped your dad act better when he was leaving El Salvador for the authorities because he really committed to the role which you already said yeah. the other one would be yeah. that like you were able to make friends with people and gain their trust in the hotel where like right. you're actually going to get those connections where if you just showed up i'm sure people would be more reluctant to, yeah exactly or like you wouldn't be able to trust it as much because you wouldn't have rapport yeah yeah so so from that point you know he buys tickets on a bus um that's going to take us closer to the border and um you know i guess from from the capital to what is Mexicali or Calexico. Yeah, Calexico, Mexicali. That's, Calexico is, is on the US side and Mexicali is on the uh, Mexican side. So the idea is to get to Mexicali. Um, I think by bus there was a few days travel. Um, and, uh, you know, both him and my mom talk about uh, how hot it was, you know, um, kind of crossing your fingers that my sister and I wouldn't get sick, you know, because sick from drinking the water, the food, or, or just, uh, just anything. Right. You know, um, 
And so we spent a few days on the bus just traveling through Mexico to get to, to Mexicali. Um, and <clears throat> throughout that process, you know, you know, he meets a lot of people, a lot of, you know, some of them, which are also trying to get to the U.S., right? Um, you know, so he, he hears a lot of stories of, of people just trying to get up here, you know. And back then, it was a little bit easier, much easier than now, I, I would think. Um, now it's it's a whole lot more difficult, right? Um, but Why is that, do you think? So, like, I'm sure it is, just mm -hmm. in general, but like just databases, better communication between authorities. Yeah, I would say so. You know, okay. you've got more technology, right? You know, makes sense. You know, it's it's the same idea behind, you know, doing the illicit stuff with cash versus like you're now using having to use credit card, right? <laughs> I can imagine if I had to leave the U.S. and the government had me on a list, it would be incredibly challenging to to be able to leave it all, like even, right. even for vacation. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, so um, so you know, we, we get on the bus um, and we make it out to uh. Mexicali. At the, by this point, he has made contact with another person that's going to take us in over at Mexicali. Cool. Um, and we arrive there, and uh, he says, "You know, my mom was like, <clears throat> she says I was scared because the guy that showed up was wearing a sombrero that was like this big. <laughs> he was wearing sandals. <laughs> he was this big fat guy. That's fucking hilarious. Hairy, right?" And this is the guy that's going to, you know, we're going to stay at his house. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> you know, that guy's your lifeline. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and she, she says, you know, um, you know, my, my mom is like five feet tall on a good day, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so to her, this guy was like just humongous, giant. you know, yeah. Yeah, giant, right, you know, um, and so, so she's, you know, she, she sees, she takes one look at this guy and she's like, Oh fuck! Like you know, this is the pl the guy we're gonna stay with, right? So, but you know, you got no choice, right? It's either that or like, you know, what what do you do, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, so so this guy takes us to to his house, right? And and you know, um, and he this guy has a family and he's got three or four kids, I think is what he had. Um, it's hot as hell, somewhere around a hundred degrees, right? And you know parents are concerned with us being possibly being dehydrated and all that. Right. And, and now you're at this guy's house. Um, turns out the guy was like him and his family were, were really nice. Awesome. You know? Um, and then, you know, my dad notices that like, you know, his kids don't have much to eat, you know? So it's like, you know, so my dad basically says, <clears throat> take me to the store. Let's go get some food, you know? And, and, you know, my, my dad had, he had, I, I wouldn't say plenty of cash, but he had a good amount of cash to, you know, you know, to come out here, right? Yeah, it sounds um, like that's the mission. So you know, it's probably got a high budget. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, um, and and he was an accountant, so you know, I'm, <laughs> sure, I'm sure he but he knew how to he knows how to budget. I yeah, know that. Sure. <laughs> he's better than me at math, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm pretty Mental shameful. Math, he's, he's really good at it. <laughs> you know. It's it's like sometimes you know he'll start adding up numbers and he's like, "Come on, what is it? What is it?" He's like, "Come on, you're an engineer," and I'm like, "Yes, Dad, I'm an engineer, but I am not a mathematician." And usually, an engineer has a calculator or a spreadsheet, you know. Available. Yeah, exactly. A computer. <laughs> right. yeah. I have some some um, relatives that are in, uh, I'll say, like executive leadership positions and sales, uh -huh. and those people are incredible at mental arithmetic. Like just, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, just, it's just automatic, you know, I was like, well, like I was, I was one of them in one of them with one of the sales meeting and somebody was asking about covering a certain amount of area with like a robot and what amount of time he's like, well, the area is this many by this many feet. You've got to take this line. So therefore it would take, you know, X number. Of, and I'm like, how the fuck would you, like, I wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's how my dad is. He's, you know, um. Yeah, he's he's really good at math, but so you know, so he's got a, a pretty good budget coming out here, right? And um, he buys food for the for the family, and um, we end up staying there. Awesome. Um, a whole month. Nice out there. Yeah, a whole month of just heat. He says, you know, it was just 
hundred de degrees, you know, um, almost every day, you know. Wonder that guy had a big hat. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, yeah. he he bought a fan for them um, because they had a fan, but it was just not big enough, and so he bought a fan. And and you know, he talks about how they bought this little, um, like a little mini swimming pool. A pool, right? You know, the the baby pool. Um, they put water in there, and they had the fans just blowing air through there to kind of cool off the place, right? The evap, nice. Um, yep, the evap, yep. Um, just kind of a low tech way of doing it, but none, oh. you know, nonetheless, it, it works, right? Um, of course. You know, so so we spent a month out there with them, um, and at that point, that's when uh, the person that he had been in contact with over in El Salvador, or he had, there was a middleman that he had been talking to, and that middleman knew the actual person that was going to bring us here. It turns out, um, and earlier in the story, I, you know, I said that I used to go purchase uh, some sweet bread from this one lady back in El Salvador. It turns out that the guy that uh, is now going to bring us is her son. Oh, cool. The whole time, you know, we knew that she had a son out here, but, you know, we, we – she never talked about what he did or anything, but it turns out that he's the guy that that brings in people from <laughs> from from Central America over also to the Also considered a coyote. Yeah, coyote. There you cool. go. Yeah. Um, so you know, which was a, a big relief, right? Because we, you know, we really know this lady. She, you know, she's very, she's been very nice to me, and and you know, we know her quite a bit. Um, and to know that it's her son that's bringing us over. Oh, for sure. That's got to be, you know, like it's a relief. Yeah. You know. Um, and so, and so, you know, he, he meets us up over there, he talks further with my dad of how things are going to go down. And so the idea is that from, from Mexico, we would leave at midnight and we would essentially have to walk through, um, some fields out there in the middle of some field, he would, holy crap be there waiting at that point um we'd get in this truck you said no cell phones we'd, at this point no cell phones right wow. yeah okay it, it's essentially it's timed right it's kind of like you know kind of like uh I, I you know i don't know how the hell they did it because yeah there's so many things know, could have gone wrong yeah you know throughout um, this whole process wow yeah i'm sure this you know they they timed it right, like you know, you, yeah. you should be there. It should take you about this much, and you know, to get there and so on. Um, but um, he was probably so waiting out get... there for like an hour just in case. Yeah. So so my my mom and dad get going, and my mom says that it was so dark that they could not see anything, and the guy had told them, "You just go straight wow. in this direction, and you know, um, you know, I will be over." over on that side, right? Whatever that side was. <clears throat> um, and so, uh, you know, it, it, at, at that point, so the other side is, is the US side, right? Right at, at the border, right? So um, it turns out that we're now walking through this field, it's dark. Um, and, um, you know, they're carrying two kids, right? My sister and I. Um, and they're just kind of, you know, using all their senses to go straight. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> you know, and so so they get going, and about halfway through or so, uh, you know, you could hear the the helicopters, right? You know, um, from you know immigration, right? Looking, make sure that nobody's crossing the border and so on. Shit. And do you remember that, or so is that more from the parents' recollection? That's more from the parents. Got it. Um, okay. What I what I do remember is just kind of the, um just kind of the like the smell of, of like the dirt grass so you sense. know it, there's moments where i've like smelled it and it's like this is you know i remember something like this like it's dark and it's it doesn't feel safe you know it's it's a strange feeling okay. um <clears throat> and so we get going and then the helicopters are around there and there's a helicopter is basically sweeping that area and uh you know they in the middle of the night with that light, they happen to see a little, like a little bush, just, you know, that they, they can get under, you know, um, because there's like almost nothing out there. Right. And yeah, so you find cover. Yeah. So the, the, 
the light is basically sweeping back and forth and then they see this little bush and they just go for it right and they just everybody just kind of ducks under that little bush and she's you know my mom says that the, the little bush didn't have a lot of leaves but nonetheless it was some kind of cover you know and um we get underneath there and, and my dad says that you know the helicopter continues to sweep and, and you could just the light just kind of comes over relatively quick you know and they're just like hoping and praying that you know they haven't been seen you know um luckily they you know we didn't get seen right nobody excuse me, the helicopter didn't see us uh yeah uh you know and, you know my mom talks about the fact that she says you know i, I don't know how we didn't get bitten by a snake or something because you know, there was wow. no it was just jump in there in that bush and just whatever is there is is it is what it is you know yeah yeah i'm sure it's either that or get I mean, caught <laughs> yeah it makes sense to me yeah and imagine the helicopter's um, covering a ton of ground too so they're probably not paying a whole lot of attention to any one particular point right right they're probably just looking for some kind of movement right and i can also uh, imagine so. that was probably a similar feeling for your dad to like that book you know just like just stay down and wait yeah and, yeah good you know, point so. yeah that's that is yeah that that's yeah, that's another moment, right? Where it's just yeah. like, you know, um, somebody, somebody saved me. <laughs> you yeah, know? It's just not much you can do, but like be a small target at that point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and the one thing that they say is also that um, my sister and I seem to know that um, we understood the situation because we were just completely quiet throughout the whole process. Like there was no, um, you know, there was no fuss from my sister and I that like, you know, it's too dark or it's too cold or what, you know, whatever. It's just complete, just. Uh, That's perceptive for a kid. I mean, you hear stories about people like murdering their own kids during the Holocaust and stuff because <laughs> it's the yeah, shut up yeah. and you had to, or, you know, like everybody was yeah. going to die. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, in this in this moment, um, she says throughout this whole process, um, you know, they, they kept checking to make sure that we were alive just because we were just not talking and we were quiet. Um so um, you know, it's it's yeah, I, I can't say for sure whether I understood or not, um, but you know, or my sister right, but I you know just based on what they're yeah. what they, they told it could have me been I, like I, a follow the leader right like you see everyone else is being quiet and you have enough empathy to, to be like okay we're being quiet now right right and it just worked yeah. out i mean i'm speculating yeah you know and it could have also been the fact that <clears throat> i guess you could say we were kind of trained in el salvador yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like to jump under your bed because of gunfire i would imagine a searchlight elicits right, a similar right, exactly, response like, yeah yeah, yeah, you know, the whole environment, I'm sure, like you say, you know, it just, it just felt unsafe, this, right? So, like, you know. Yeah, well, this obviously isn't the same thing, but I remember I was I was doing some petty vandalism in high school, um, and we were, we were egging the school, like, you know, typical, you know, privileged <laughs> fucking Americans, and there was this one security guard in a golf cart, and I remember we threw our eggs, and um, the guy saw us and started chasing us down with this golf cart, and... Um, I mean, you know, I, it was, obviously the fear was less than what you were going through, but I, I do remember like hitting the dirt and like crouching down and getting behind an embankment while a light was overhead and just <laughs> trying to make myself as shallow flat of a target possible. as I could possibly. Yeah, yeah. You want to be as flat as you can be and, and yeah. just, you know, don't breathe and <laughs> try to be still. <laughs> so that's right. like one of the things that I feel like, you know, I'm trying to have empathy and that. And my mind goes to something like that. That's probably how it. Felt. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, yeah, I've asked them before, and it's you know the. They're in their mind, you know, they 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 never asked in that moment, right? Because you know you don't want to start a conversation, but <clears throat> to them it seemed like we understood the the situation and we understood what needed to be done, um, you know, and you know, uh, so yeah, it's it's kind of a strange thing um and like i say um it could have been just the fact that we were trained in el salvador with, that you know, makes a lot of sense to me under the bed keep yeah. you know stay shut and don't don't talk at all uh wait till it's over you know uh so that could have been the training for that yeah um, yeah it makes perfect sense 
Yeah, so so we're we're walking along, um, and we're walking down this this field. It's you know I don't know about an hour, hour and a half. Actually, that no, was two hours at this point. Yeah, about two hours worth of walking. Uh, so you know, I don't I don't know how many miles they covered <clears throat> in the dark, right? And so um, they get to this point where there is the fence is there, right? Um, and there's been a hole that's been cut for them. Nice. You know, or, Wait, just for um, them? Like, <clears throat> like, or it was there and they oh, I, probably don't know. It, it was, I don't know if it was specifically for us, but um, yeah. there was a hole there. You know, everything else, the rest of the fence is intact. So, so you know, that's that's the position they were supposed to go nice. to. And, the, and my parents say, we don't understand how the hell we were able to maintain such a heading. tight <laughs> heading on this, right? And, and arrive there. <laughs> without having to look at it, right? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so, so they get there and um, at that moment, you know, of course the helicopter continues to go around, right? And uh, my dad gets through and my mom's shirt gets caught in the fence. And ah, so shit. something's now, and they're in the complete dark and like she just, all she knows is that something is now pulling on her and like, you know, she's, she's freaking out because like, you know, she's got my sister and, Makes um, sense. And then, you know, my dad realizes it's the fence. You know, you're stuck on the fence somehow, you know, and, and all yeah. he does is just, he just grabs her and he just, just pulls really hard. Like uh, whatever is stuck on there is going to be left behind rips. you. Luckily, yeah, l- sure. luckily it was not skin, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. You know? So, um, so that, you know, that's where, where that happens, right? And so, you know, she finally, let, you know, it, it lets her go, right? Like, you know, her blouse is not ripped. Yeah. Um, so we get going, and then finally the guy is there, right? Um, and it's just a complete relief that that you know that he's there, and that he's you know, he, he, you know as he said, he was going to be there. Yeah, that's awesome. At that point, yeah, at that point, we think that it's it's over. You know, my parents think that it's over, but he says, "Well, you, you know, we are across the border, but there is another checkpoint up ahead. You know, and and at that checkpoint, you're going to have to." <clears throat> You're gonna get in the truck with me. She is gonna pretend she is my wife, and this is my child. And you are going to have to get underneath the seat of the truck with your son, you know. Um, and so I, I don't know how much space there was in the truck, but you know, under the seat, <laughs> under the seat. But I don't think there's much space underneath. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Holy shit! You know, um, as and far so, as I know, those seats don't have room under them at all. <laughs> it's incredible. I, I know. I, you know, and I don't, I don't know what kind of yeah, truck it was, but yeah, yeah, it, it'd be interesting. Yeah, I might ask him what kind of truck it, it might was, have been but... modified. Like, there's, there's, I, I know that, like, sometimes at least for commodity smuggling, yeah, uh, people will hollow out areas and vehicles. So I wonder if that maybe there was a similar thing for for that. It, yeah, it could, yeah, it could have, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so at that point, you know, um, my dad and I, we get underneath the seat. And we're driving for about 20, 30 minutes. Um, you know, my mom, my mom is on the passenger side pretending like that's his wife and so on. Um, get to the checkpoint, um, you know, and they're checking vehicles. You know. Well, U.S. Border Patrol is aggressive, like even with me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that, yeah, especially in that area, I could imagine, you know. Um, I mean, right? I get shit on the Canadian border, and I'm a fucking white dude that was born here. <laughs> Can only imagine. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and there you go. You know, a bunch of brown people in the in the truck. Yeah, coming for sure. From, I'm sure it's from the ass. south, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we get to the uh, checkpoint, and they're checking vehicles. Um, you know, it, it's kind of a you know fifty fifty chance whether they're checking them or not, or just kind of letting them go by. Um, and they're checking them. Um, so, uh, you know, of course they, they can't check every single car or vehicle that goes through there. And so they're just kind of picking and choosing. I don't know how they, they do that, but, um, so this whole time, my mom is just really nervous. You know, my dad and I, can't show it. my, my dad doesn't know what's going on. Just, you know, just kind of hears the guy telling him like, stay you fly, quiet, you know, stay flat, flat as stay you flat, be. don't move, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and again, this time, during this time, um, my dad's just, he says, you know, I'm just looking at you and you're just completely quiet. Like 
you don't seem to be scared, but you know that like, you know, you're not gonna say anything. You're not gonna talk. You know, you know what the situation is. You know, <clears throat> um, and so we get to the checkpoint and um, we lock out. That's awesome. They don't check our truck. Um, they just ask for, you know, um, his papers essentially. You know, and he says, you know, this is my paperwork. It's my wife, and my kids. So just going back to our home uh, in in L.A. You know, and. Um, they just check his papers and off we go. We we made it. We're now in the U.S. Nice. So, yeah, you know. Nice space. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I could imagine the relief that my parents felt. You know, when when that happened. You know, um, you know, and so, and he brings us. So, my dad always wanted to live. If he was gonna have to live in the U.S., he wanted to live in San Francisco. So that is where he brings us out. You know, out to San Francisco. Um, Cool. He didn't, you know, they suggested that he go to LA, and my dad was like, "No, no, thanks. San Francisco is the place I want to be at." Yes, me. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Nothing against people from LA, you know, but he just didn't want to be there, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like so, a different country as opposed to the Bay Area. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the yeah. fact that he knew that from El Salvador is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we we had family members both in L.A. and uh, San oh, Francisco. Yeah, so you you knew. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, and actually, San Fr To be fair, San Francisco is where my grandma was staying. Oh, cool. Um, so she had helped also in funding this whole, um, operation. Let's call nice. it. <laughs> you <know? laughs> awesome. You know, um, and so you know, brings us out of San Francisco, and um, you know, we arrive in San Francisco. We've got some money. Um, he doesn't have a job. We don't have a yeah. necessarily a place to stay. You know, my uncle takes us in. My uncle's been here before we got here. He had been here somewhere around five or ten years, something like that. Um, so you know, and this is uh, he's living out there in the in the mission, the mission oh, cool. district. Good area. Yeah. So um, he's out there, and you know, he's got his girlfriend. Uh, which, by the way, she was Jewish, you know. Oy. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've got a history of uh, many of my uncles uh, you know, dating Jews. Having Jewish girlfriends. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. my um, one uh, cousin just married a dude from Mexico. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> South America, technically. No, it's North yeah. America. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, you know, I, and I actually. Uh, but she does live in San Francisco. <laughs> oh, she does. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have two, uh, two cousins that are, um, they're half Jewish and half Salvadorian. Oh, cool. Because another one of my uncles married a Jewish lady, and you know, um, you know, it's uh, so yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah. None of it matters. Like I think, like the more ethnically diverse, like if you're gonna make kids, like probably the less your chance of getting a disease. For yeah. those kids, right? Because like yeah. they probably got better genes. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was uh, um, just kind of diverting a little bit. Uh, I was listening to this podcast where this guy was saying that men have somewhere around five hundred, is it billion, sperms? <laughs> Wait, at one point in time, Sperm. or like throughout their life? I, like, I, like right now, my balls have five hundred billion sperms. Yeah, right now. <laughs> yeah. Don't quote me on this, you know. Um, <laughs> but, not, it's just but interesting. Was, yeah, that's like saying that, it's like a hundred world populations or so. I mean, like that's yeah. Well, he says, you know, yeah. um, he says, if you think about it, you it's are like, the winner. You you are the best. Fastest right? You know? <laughs> oh, sorry, I mean, it's fastest swimmer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and you know, and he says, uh, "Can you imagine? Those are other use that could have happened, like you know, oh, yeah. different versions, right? You know, um, a bunch so, of them make it to the finish line too. I mean, but every time yeah. I've seen that video of the sperm eating at the egg, I feel like it's like not that many. It's like only like maybe thirty that make it to the end around that time. Yeah, of five hundred yeah, billion. Other... <laughs> you know, like, yeah, <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, I guess that yeah, like, no wonder so many people can't conceive, right? I mean, like." If only like and thirty is I'm obviously making this up. It's just from observation, high school bio. But if only thirty of five hundred billion make it, 
the probability of known making it's got to be pretty high yeah i mean it's got to be a really difficult task to get there yeah i, I can't remember if he said 500 billion or 500 million this is oddly analogous to the story you've been telling yeah <laughs> i'm sorry i don't mean to you don't take this the yeah. wrong way <laughs> yeah. yeah the yeah. odds are against you i mean <laughs> you know, you've got lots yeah, of exactly. stuff trying yeah. to get you yeah Man. yeah so um so uh so i guess getting back to the the yeah, how I got here, right? I heard a bit on, <laughs> on sperm and all that. <laughs> I mean, it's fun to get philosophical and tangential. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and so, uh, you know, at that point, we're we're now here in San Francisco. We're in the mission. Uncle takes us in for about a week, and he says to my dad, "Have you found a job yet?" <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Typical thing to ask someone that's crashing with you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, um, you know, he speaks no English or you know any of that. <laughs> um, and uh, so, uh, you know, eventually my dad finds a job. Uh, he ends up working as a uh, at a restaurant. It was called Robinson's. Oh, cool! I remember him bringing like the most delicious sandwiches i had ever tasted you know i mean it was just uh amazing um That's awesome yeah um it's just yeah yeah so um never had sandwiches that good and you know ever again but you know i'll, I'll keep searching <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe some deli will, will yeah will, if you come to new york yeah. let me know I'll, I'll show you around <laughs> yeah yeah there you go yeah you know um that's also where he uh, he ate so many croissants that you know his cholesterol skyrocketed. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure his waistline so, as well. <laughs> yeah, waistline. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, my mom uh, begins working you know, by cleaning houses, right? And so now we're cool. off getting some cash. Um, uh, eventually, from there we move out. You know, within about two weeks we move out of there, and we've now got an apartment, um, still in the San Francisco area. Uh, living with with my grandma actually, and one of my uncles, cool. uh, and it, yeah, so it was kind of always had uncles yeah. around me. You know, it was like the whole family lived together there, right? So it was like a roommate situation, like everybody chipped in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you're yeah, not exactly. you're, you're not like you know trashing at this point. You're you're contributing, yeah. so it's probably a totally different dynamic. Right. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, and and again, the whole smell thing, right? Um, uh. I remember how those apartments smelled, and I've, it's just one of those things that just takes takes me back to my childhood when you know when I lived out there. A um, few years ago, I happened to be um, I entered these apartments. Just you know, a friend lives out there. Not the same ones where I used to live at, but you know, um, some other ones. And and it that smell kind of came through and interesting. Like, it was just like it just took me back to to those days you know um yeah actually i remember going to friends so, houses and them smelling different than the house i was in from when i was a kid now that you're mentioning it uh yeah so yeah so the um so that was you know i've always found that interesting right and so so you know now we're living in this apartment um you know i start going to school start learning english uh, i remember being in kindergarten understanding what the teacher was saying but like could not communicate Makes at sense. all like i had no idea how to what to say or how to say it or so on you know that was that was actually a pretty traumatic time for myself uh because just That's i didn't awesome. understand the language uh teacher expected me to know the language like there was no no you know um she was not a nice teacher she was very was shitty so i'm firm, sure that compounded very, your very, fear and made it harder for you to learn the language like I know when I yeah if somebody's being an asshole and I'm in a different country and I'm not great at the language like it makes me want to go into my shell more and not try to speak the language because I'm worried about getting yeah. chastised if I screw it up. I, yeah, I don't know you know, if that was know. part of it. I you know it 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 definitely created stress within me um, throughout the third grade. Every night going to school or the the previous night. Um, it was complete stress, like stomach ache type. I can't, couldn't sleep. Sucks. Um, yeah, that was the kind of uh, 
say probably about 70% of the nights, that's the way it was. It was just, that was way of life uh, for me for, for, from like kindergarten to, from like first grade to about third grade. <clears throat> uh, I ended up with really strict teachers. Like, I don't know why every year, you know, it's like, my sister got all the nice teachers and, <laughs> and I had the really strict ones, you know, it was like a really military type of structure. Um, yeah. You know, the, the positive thing is though, like, um, it created a lot of, uh, well, it created a lot of stress within me. It also, um, you know, I, I became very disciplined, you know, Discipline and very mentally hard. Like sounds like you already you know. had that though, from being able to avoid searchlights and gunfire. Possibly, yeah, but yeah, mm. that that could be possible, right? You know, um, you know, um, I, I've always been really mature yeah. up until a certain age, and then I became <laughs> immature. <laughs> <laughs> Another villain. Yeah, you know, it's like you went from very mature. Uh, in fact, in second grade, I I wanted to wear suits to go to school. Like I would carry briefcases when I was in high school. <laughs> wear a backpack now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so you know, so yeah, I was very structured with those teachers, very strict. Um, so I mentally I became pretty hard. Uh, in even between first and fourth grade, it's a good silver lining, to be honest. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, between no, it was between second and fourth grade, I used to get into fights almost every day. Like in the physical schoolyard. fights, just arguments. Physical fights. fights. Okay. Physical fights. Like, I would go out and look for them. Oh, nice. Kind of, it wasn't so like people nice. were bullying me. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'd go out there, <laughs> and I you used were dealing to look with for some serious fight. shit, and that's called yeah, up, like, yeah. A way of coping with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It, you know, like real often I'd get into fights and, you know, I was a small kid and like, nonetheless, I'd say about 80, 90% of them, I'd, I'd win. Nice. You know, just <laughs> kick their ass kind of thing. You That's know? awesome. Um, uh, and I remember there were these two twins um, and I decided I was going to pick a fight with both of them at the same time. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Man. Dude, I, don't, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Um, so I, be <clears throat> I beat the crap just, out of Just so I can picture it, identical twins or fraternal? Identical twins. <laughs> yeah. It's like that scene from The Matrix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I, you know, essentially I beat one. You know, I, I beat one up and um, and then his brother came over and, and I was like, let's do it. Like, you know, whatever. And, and I remember they both, and they were gentle because they both just grabbed me and pushed me up against the fence. Like, that was it. And they just held me there for a few seconds. And I was like, fine, then, okay, I'll stop. You know, maybe you guys are stronger than me. <laughs> Collectively. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so they didn't do anything to, uh, you know. Nice of them. Yeah. Right. So Under then. Under the circumstances. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, um, and then I remember one fight where I, I beat up this kid and then his fifth grade brother came over. And that was the first time that I got punched in the stomach. Like. And just lost my breath. I mean, yeah, no, I've been there. For me, I think it was it was probably first grade where somebody punched me like right in the solar plexus on the school bus. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know. So, um, so that was kind of like you know that moment in life. You know, I, I always ask myself was is maybe that was a product of the whole uh, being in the war. You know, having to come over here. Maybe it's a trauma. I don't know. You know, I, maybe that's what it was. Right. I, you know, um, it's also tough to adjust I, to a new area. Like, I mean, even not having come from a war zone, like when I moved from Pennsylvania to New York when I was 13, it was like the middle of puberty. And I just remember like crying myself to sleep for like over a year. I mean, like it was, oh, wow. you know, and I, I get made fun of for being Jewish and uh -huh. I did not adjust well. And so it was, you know, and I started to kind of act out and you know, start drinking, you know, and like smoking some marijuana and doing uh -huh. stuff. And um, I don't know. I mean, a, a lot of that was, you know, just trying to fit in, trying to yeah. fit in and, or, or like just figure out, you know, yeah, trying to figure out like where I fit in in, in, the, in the new town, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, yeah, I could imagine. Yeah. I mean, so um, obviously yeah, a different so that scenario, was, uh, but it sounds like some similarity. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, yeah. And, and that's, you know, right. We, we don't, 
cope with it in a different way, right? Although, you know, I was much younger, right? So, you know, yeah. I wouldn't be drinking at, at you know, second grade. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope not. Some people do. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, um, so that was kind of, uh, you know, my elementary years, um, you know, where I, I feel that I became pretty, pretty hardy, like mentally, physically, um, you know, like I say, I'm not a, a big guy, right? But nonetheless, mentally, I've always been very uh, mentally strong and, and gritty, you know, um, you know, so it definitely, I think it has to be part of it being the environment and then also, the, you know, possibly also having some of it myself right um, yeah well some of that might have just been having lived through all that trauma and that shit you know like yeah i don't know if like a long line at a starbucks is gonna piss you off after that yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that makes exactly. sense <laughs> yeah you know it could be uh, wrong either that or it'll either that or it'll make you go postal <laughs> <laughs> the straw that broke the camel's back <laughs> yeah, there you go. it's a fucking espresso machine god damn it yeah, exactly yeah <laughs> yeah um, so, you know, and, and my mom was, you know, she's always been very loving, but very hard as well. Right. You know, um, so she, she had a somewhat of a hard life as well. And so she's, you know, she's also played a huge part in, in helping me become mentally strong. You know, That's she's awesome. a, she's a really strong woman herself too. And you still and, close with her? What's that? You still close with her? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck they, yeah. they, they live close to me yeah that's awesome um, yeah she uh you know she'll be in pain and she she can ride out the pain like <laughs> just look at you like mom or is it hurting she's like yeah nice <laughs> so, nice <laughs> yeah so that's that's what i learned from her you know amongst many other things don't right? deny but, it but yeah also yeah. yeah don't give up yeah so. yeah no she doesn't she's you know uh in fact when she sees when she's seen me like, uh, you know, uh, getting a little mentally weak, she's like, the Person. hell, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, uh, you know, I'll, I'll wrap it up here a little bit just cause it's, we're running, running a little, you know, Close to time. Have to cut it out here. Yeah. No yeah. Um, but so that's my journey here. Right. Wow. And then, um, from there, this that you know the, the number one focus in my mind was getting educated, um, and early Why on I wanted. Like, when did you start thinking about that? Uh, I'd say probably about middle school. Cool. Um, you know, but at the beginning it was more just un trying to learn the language, right? But it makes sense. Towards That's middle school, the biggest barrier at the beginning. <clears throat> yeah, and I've always been. I've always been a nerd. I've always yeah, wanted well, to learn. People can't communicate things. any concepts to you because the language yeah. is like it's yeah. the gateway to you know like science, technology, all that. You know. So. Right, right. You know, so um, you know, so it's like you know that's that's the whole thing, right? Like it's it's always I've always been a nerd, always wanting to learn all kinds of things. You know, just yeah, you and me both. Um, yeah, just hungry to learn. So like I'm always looking for people to teach me things. You know, um. You know, mostly good. You know, How so. old were you when you started uh, <laughs> making things, like building stuff? Uh, I'd say probably in the third grade. Nice. Kind of, yeah. Probably third, yeah. Second grade, second, third grade. But I was probably kindergarten or first for me. I, I, I had mm. a friend in kindergarten whose dad was an audio engineer who recorded Biggie Smalls, and he was making a CD oh, labeling wow. robot in his attic. That would take oh, cool. uh, CDs out of a burner and put them in a printer and then put them in a finish pile from like a start oh, pile. Cool. And yeah. he had this guy, um, Juan, and he's like, I already pay Juan to do a half ass job. You know, why would I pay him more to do a quarter ass job? So he was like secretly <laughs> to replace his employee with a robot. <laughs> and his son and I were just learning from him about, you know, like oh, circuitry geez. and stuff and automation. Yeah, you know, it was. <clears throat> It was, I think I was in second grade and I think I might've talked to, about it in, in one of the previous podcasts, but um, I remember taking, uh, you know, I was always taking things apart. Three quarters of the time, I couldn't put them back together. You did mention <laughs> that. Yeah. Extra screws or so, you know, uh, so, you know, 
Um, and I, I think I might have mentioned that uh, I took apart a car that was, you know, a, a little racetrack, plugged it into, uh, you know, for all the kids listening, right? Assuming there's kids listening, right? Um, hey kids, don't do this uh, at home. Yeah, don't do this at home. Too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I took this car and, and essentially got a, a a charger, plugged in the charger into the outlet, live wires, you know, made that cable a little bit longer, hooked it up to the car, and it, I mean, it went fast. It nice. Went fast. <laughs> but the, Wait, you want 120 AC? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Straight, straight into the wall. <laughs> That's a lot of you to, you to get hurt. Straight into the wall, man. I knew and it, it was... worked. It wasn't. It wasn't like a DC circuit. That it's interesting. So I would think you'd need no, to I rectify. Even... Well, it's what it I was. Know? So it was one of those. Um, what do they call them? Uh, the little cars on the racetrack? Like a slot um, car. Like a slot car. Yeah. It might have. It might yeah. have just been AC to begin with that worked. I wonder. Like maybe they just. Yeah, I, I have no idea. All, all I could remember was that that you know. It, it's got to work. It's either that or it's going to just die, right? You know? Smoke, yeah. I never thought about the fact that I could die. <laughs> <laughs> I think I licked, like, an alarm system wire when I was, like, you know, like, before 10 years old. I just started right. licking wires in the house to see what would happen. So oh, it's geez. lucky I didn't find the AC when I was in that phase. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. So, um, yeah, so at, at an early age, I was kind of, you know, playing around with, all kinds of toys and just kind of, you know, messing around. And probably about middle school is when I decided that I was going to work for NASA. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. And then somewhere along high school, beginning of high school, I kind of, kind of lost it a bit. You know, like, yeah, I didn't care to work for NASA. And then, and then have about, probably about junior high, junior, junior, yeah, junior year. That's when I pick it up again. And, and at that point, that's where I begin to begin to focus again. Um, you know, get into college, and and that's that's you know, become so disciplined in college for the first year or two. And I think also spoke about this, but just had no friends at all, and that was the plan. Like it was just going to be school education. Yeah, I've gone through that period. Yeah, you you're know, just so, you're just um, like gunning to be the valedictorian. You know, no matter what the cost. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, I, I got sick because of that, right? Because it was just it complete sense. stress. You know? Not sustainable. Um, <laughs> no, maybe it is for some people, but I didn't want to devote yeah. myself to that for a long period. Yeah, but, you know, but that's what I needed, right? And, and like, um, you know, I just kind of took everything that I had learned and my experience in life from a kid um, and put that Makes to sense. work as far as the, the discipline and just being hard um that worked for about two years you know and, and i did that know, immediately that's... after i had that maladjustment period in school actually that was kind of my way of getting uh -huh. back at all the people that were making fun of me right right yeah yeah you know so um it's at that point that you know middle school is when i decide high school i pick it up again and i'm on a mission that i am going to work for nasa cool you know um and you know Eventually, I get an internship, and, and you know, twenty years later or so, I've worked for NASA for twenty years. You know, it's, yeah, it's just gone by. Nobody so quick, does that you know? anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. Twenty years, same How agency. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, it's, uh, I'm always looking for for uh, for more, right? You know, I mean, um, you'll probably accomplish things at Google too. <laughs> I would assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm excited about that position. Um, it's with the uh, advanced uh, projects team, you know. I'm jealous so, of you. Uh, I was trying to get with those guys. Well, not those guys. X. <laughs> we talked about this. Okay. Yeah. 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 And and the, yeah. From what I understand, um, and again, you know, it's, I'm just about to begin, right? Um, the uh, it's called the ATAP group. So the ATAP group. Um, it's a little different to the moonshot team where the moonshot team looks at um, you know technologies that could become eventually companies you know become companies right kind of like waymo and so on right yeah it makes sense um, that's like their their baby 
Right, right. So um, with with the ATAP is more developing technologies within Google. So, um, you know, it's the next chapter of my life, um, you know, uh, as far as my career goes. And so truly, truly excited, uh, thankful for the people that have helped me to get get to this point. You know, there's yeah. been a lot of people that, that have just, you know, um, have provided me opportunities. And even those that haven't given me the opportunities, I've also learned from the, oh, those that sure. experienced this field. Oh, sure. You can even field. learn from an adversary, I mean, a lot of the time. Right, right. Uh, in fact, the, sometimes you know i sometimes learn a whole lot more from people that are out to get me right you know because it's you know <laughs> it's that that challenge right um me too <laughs> not not that i don't want opportunities so please <laughs> yeah. um, but no but it's educational yeah, it's, somebody can even like hold a mirror and show you bad aspects of your personality just by acting right a way that you don't want to be yeah yeah yeah, yeah you know so um yeah, it's it's taken a lot. Um, you know, both family members, friends, uh, coworkers. Um, you know, you know, even speaking with you, right? You know, yeah, no, it's been educational our... speaking with you. I mean, you and I have yeah. great conversations. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, for those of you that don't know, uh, Spencer and I meet, you know, every so often and talk about just you know uh, how to be a better director, program manager, and so yeah. on. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, proud it's... Of. So. All similar things, and we'll, we'll talk about different engineering problems that we're facing down and bounce ideas off each other. Right. I mean, right. help each other out. Um, yeah. That, I mean, our last conversation, I can't remember what we got into, but I mean, it was just deep management philosophy. And I mean, you gave me some really, really good advice. And that was, that was yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. No, appreciate yeah, you. Thanks. Buddy. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you also. You know, like I say, I'm learning a lot from you too. Uh, different. Yeah people from different backgrounds and experiences, you know. Um, well, we're both me, it's, highly it's competitive. <laughs> like pretty smart yeah, people. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's yeah. interesting to see the Venn diagram, but then also the bits I haven't covered in yours. And then maybe hopefully yeah. for you, I've got some bits over here that you haven't seen yet. And there's, oh, definitely, there's definitely, lessons definitely, yeah. to be learned I mean, both ways. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. always looking to learn. So yeah, Likewise. definitely yeah. learned uh, already quite a bit from you. Uh, so yeah, as really I have to do. Yeah, so. Cool. Um, well, anyways, um, I hate. No, no, it's all good. Yeah. Let's let's cut it. Uh, a lot of fun okay. having you on. Uh, anything else you want to plug or mention or talk about or just just cut it? Um, not for now. I think uh, uh you know, uh, cool. my LinkedIn. I just Ricardo Olivares. You know. Excellent. Uh, and then. I can't remember the name, the the whole link, you know, but um, <laughs> just just look for a guy that looks like this on LinkedIn. Yeah, <laughs> Ricardo Olivares, Olivares. Sorry. Yeah. And then yeah. I do want to say, and I've been meaning to get this in. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please hit subscribe because we put a new one of these out every Sunday at nine a.m. Eastern, six a.m. Pacific. So if you if you like these, check it out. Uh, add yourself to the subscriber list. It helps us tremendously and you'll find out when the next one comes out. Ricardo, thanks for coming on. It's been a pleasure and I'll talk to you soon. Spencer, thank you so much. Take care, man. All right, see ya.